Big thanks to PCBWare for sponsoring this video and providing the new parts for any spinner. I mean, just look at these things. They are awesome. I actually wish that I'd opened these properly on camera for the first time because, yeah, these new parts are awesome and I... There was, there was a lot of um, gobsmackedness going on when I opened these for the first time. So we have a fully aluminium pulley, which means that we're not going to have Annie's weapon system ejected from her ever again, which will be really, really nice. Uh, and we've got a tool steel dead shaft. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. <laughs> Now, if you've been around the channel a while, you may be thinking, Ben, spinner parts for Annie? That's not the problem with Annie right now. The problem with Annie is the weird brushless systems that you keep putting into her over and over again, which you would be 100% right. However, the weird brushless drive systems that I have been putting into Annie over and over again, there's a really simple fix for that. We go back to brushed systems and we either go to a 25 mil brush motor as we did before, or we upgrade and go to a 22 mil brushed motor, which is kind of the standard in the UK. And these are actually where I got those from. So that's where we're gonna go with Annie's drive system for the next little while at the very least. The brush systems, uh, could be good, but I feel like Annie's the wrong robot to be putting those systems into. I kind of want to put them into something else where I can concentrate on the drive system a little bit better. Uh, putting them in Annie makes everything just a little bit weird. While the weapon system, the spinning system on Annie has been great for the most part, there have still been issues with it. The uh, aforementioned destruction of the weapon, especially when we're upside down against a vert, the plastic pulleys that I've been using just don't hold up in that situation and I have lost the weapon a couple of times to that. So a new aluminium pulley should, should help us fix that quite a lot. But the second one is a hidden problem that we haven't really discussed all that much on this channel. And that is these. These are the aluminium pieces that I use to hold Annie's weapon into the chassis of Annie. So this here is the very first iteration. It was a rectangular box tube that got pieces cut out of it and it worked for a very, very long time until it sustained a massive hit or Annie sustained a massive hit and it bent at the edges where I had cut away part of the tube for weight saving reasons. Um, the weapon stack up didn't work particularly well because I was using different bearings at the time and it was just a little bit fiddly and finagly and just didn't quite uh, go exactly as it was supposed to. So this whole system got retired, I think in version two or version three of Annie uh, and we moved on to rectangular tube, uh, sorry, to square tube. Now we moved on to square tube to hopefully avoid having to cut extra mass out of it. Uh, we also changed the length of the thing and made Annie just a little bit uh, shallower or less wide, I guess. Um, and we did cut holes in it, but that was mostly to get access to bolts and things. And yeah, this got really badly beat up. And I have spoken about this before in one of my Annie breakdown videos. Now uh, you can see where the bearings just mangled this piece of aluminium, something crazy. And also there is a fairly crazy curve to this. There is a curve between here, like along this front face, it is curved back where repeated impacts with the weapon have essentially slowly bowed this in this direction over time. Now, uh, when we moved on and we moved up to the new version of Annie, this is uh, the same system out of the new version of Annie. I tried adding extra bolts further in to basically uh, not have the force act over such a large distance because you can see it was kind of only bolted to the chassis here and here which means all of that force is applied over a long distance which means that yeah it was doing lots of damage and in this case we put bolts closer and things did kind of work a little bit. This is not bowed in the same direction. However, it's bowed in a different direction. This one is bowed this way. Uh, so that's, yeah, like down at where the weapon sits rather than anything else. And again, it has the same issue with uh, the bearing mangling up the aluminium that runs everything else. So all of this was just a problem realistically and I couldn't, change this without changing everything here because the weapon stack up is so precise to get the weapon to like a couple of mils off the ground 
adding a spacer or anything in here forces the weapon into the ground, which means that this, I just had to deal with it. Uh, and it also, all of this rubbing is where, not only wear here, but also wear in the bearings. And it's also reducing the amount of energy that is sitting inside Annie's weapon because it's going into melting away the aluminium essentially. So that is where the new parts come in. This is our new dead shaft. So the old dead shaft, it's literally a bolt. It was literally just bearing stacked up on top of this bolt. The bolt then goes up through here and the bearings touch and interface with that and everything goes from there. Uh, however, as I was pondering this idea of how I fix and update this, I saw Neon or Glow, the new beetle from Ellis Ware, where he uses something along these lines, which is essentially a dead shaft that gets bolted straight into HDPE. So that's the idea with this. And here is a 3D printed mock-up of what our HDPE is going to look like. So essentially, this is the bottom surface. This bolts in here, just like so. And now we have Annie's weapon shaft. And then we can mount the weapon on top of that and then put a bolt in here to keep the weapon at the right spot. The other thing that this has is there's now a little lip here, which has been built in and factored in such that the bearings, when they run, only run on this surface and none of the actual moving parts are ever going to contact anything. So we're going to avoid all of that rubbing issue. And then because our new weapon mount is going to be a thick, chunky piece of HDPE, every time there's a hit, it's going to bend a little bit, but it's going to spring right back. Unlike this aluminium, which as soon as it starts bending, it just stays bent and you end up with very interesting curved pieces of metal, the HDPE should spring back into place. So if we get the old, um, the old base plate, you can see I've modified this or I've set this up so that it sits, hits the same bolt holes as the old base plate. I'm trying to keep as much from the old system as I can, but updating with the new parts. So we're gonna be running the BBB uh, 22 more motors with this new system. Everything I think is looking pretty good. So what we need to do, get the old weapon system, build out this, as a fully fledged system, uh, get some new 3D printed parts and start working on, yeah, a prototype of any version seven. Oh, I am so happy with this. These parts have come out just perfectly. So as you can see, if my camera can focus on it, there is a very, very small two millimeter gap between the top of the pulley and the actual weapon mount here, uh, which is just enough to fit the screw heads and stuff into, which is really, really cool. On the underside and under here, so we've got the bolts that hold the weapon to the pulley, but then we've also got the bolt that holds the bearing into the whole thing. And this is actually below these uh, screw heads here, which means that this is never gonna touch the ground, which is awesome, because that is one of the things that I was having trouble with. And at one point I was trying to run on the weapon bolt and it just doesn't really work all that well. Uh, so this is really, really cool. And it also means that if I countersink the holes in the weapon bars, just that little bit more, we can get just that a little bit closer to the ground. These screw heads are currently about a mil uh, above the weapon bar or like closer to you than the weapon bar is. So that does cap how close to the ground we can get. But if we countersink these in some more, these will fit and fit well, I think. Um, so that is very, very exciting. I am so, so happy with that. And then of course, this whole system does just kind of slot in there. Now we're going to completely redo this base plate before we fight any again, uh, probably not in this video. So we're going to go back to using some 3D printed parts because we still have 
the mock-up parts from the last time we were working on Annie. So we're going to try and get Annie somewhat back together with some new mock-up parts. Now, of course, I did also say that I wanted to put the new drive system in today, which means putting in the 22 millimeter BBB motors. So we have new side walls. Okay, I am stoked with how this is going. Uh, so first of all, I'm gonna just address these wheels. These wheels are printed out of some kind of like weird, very soft rubbery material I found in my filament box that I must have had for five plus years that I've never done anything with. So I figured I'd give them a, give it a bit of a shot to try these wheels out because these are just temporary wheels. Annie will of course go back to silicon wheels uh, eventually, but for the moment I just put these down because I figured I might as well give it a shot and it prints rather nicely actually. So I'm quite happy about that. Uh, next up, we are driving properly. So the weight issue that we had in the past seems to be gone now in terms of like, mm. I push Annie around, both of the wheels move, which is great. Uh, we don't have that rocking issue that we had in the past, which may have been down to the fact that I dyed the last panel and it warped and caused the wheels to be off the ground a little bit too, but that is really, really good. The other thing is, we're too close to the ground. I think in actual fact what's happening is that one of these bolt heads is scraping along the ground because it is not as countersunk into this design as everything else. I don't think the weapon is touching. I which is insane. We've never had that happen before, uh, which is just crazy. That means we're like, two millimeters off the ground, if that, and that is insane. I mean, we're probably gonna be in trouble with that actually, because the ARC arena is not flat. <laughs> so I might end up cutting two of these front armor panels, or these front weapon mount panels. One like this, and one where the weapon is recessed up by an extra mil, maybe an extra two mil, because as mentioned, there is a recess here that holds the weapon housing so we can just pull this up a little bit and basically make it so that the weapon drives up off of the ground by a few extra mil, which we might need to do because, as I said, we are ground scraping right now. Uh, I mean, I guess the other thing I could do is change up the wheel design, add an extra millimeter or so to the wheel and add extra spacing to the standoffs, which we have the standoffs back again, one on either side. Uh, but I don't really want to do that, to be perfectly honest. I'd prefer to keep the wheels as they are. These wheels, as they stand, are already a mil oversized off of old Annie. So I don't want to keep pushing these higher and higher, especially as I haven't ever tried these brushed drive motors out. So I don't really want to overtax them. Finally, I think with this whole system is that you may have seen, and we're going to pop a wheel off here so that I can show you this a little bit easier on camera. If you were watching fairly closely to that time lapse we just went through, there are some interesting parts here, and that is this. 
So you can see that we've got the white backing plate and then this other white plate here, which is a different piece of plastic. This is a stand-in for a future aluminium angle bracket. So we're gonna have a HDPE wall and then we're gonna have a, H a aluminium angle bracket that the motor mounts to and it was like cut out correctly for the motor spacing and stuff that also bolts into the HDPE wall. So if the wheels get hit or the shaft gets hit of the motor, we shouldn't have that warping along the wall that we had in the tangential drive version of Annie. That just should not be a thing anymore because of this solid piece of aluminium. The only thing I'm worried about here is weight. Annie was a little bit underweight, but I may have added too much weight back into the system in which case we're gonna be in a lot of trouble and I need to work out how I'm gonna get rid of all of that. But for now, we're gonna go ahead with this. So this is the prototype obviously for this design and then we're gonna to have to go ahead at some point in the future and do a full HDPE cut and build of Annie, which is gonna be awesome. I can't wait to get this design in full HDPE CNC'd because yeah, this is gonna be bananas. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed that one and I will see you in the next video.